I'm Mickey Freed. I'm the founder and pastor of LifeGate Church. I started LifeGate Church uh, from the standpoint of that I felt like the Holy Spirit really spoke to me. Uh, I was on a flight in from Arizona, uh, coming into DFW, and the uh, Holy Spirit said, uh, it's time for you to plant another church. Uh, we had planted one before, a uh, Kingdom Center, and the uh, Lord said, this is going to be a little bit different for the city, but it's going to be an outreach for the city, a watering hole uh, for the city of Hearst. I haven't always been a pastor. I was a, uh, been a lot of things and God has blessed me through the years. Um, I have been uh, a firefighter uh, for almost 15 years. Uh, then I went to Bible college and then uh, I was a home builder for 30 something years as well. And so there've been a lot of marketplace ministers and uh, ministered with them uh, because I really feel like the marketplace is, is where the gospel has to be. And so uh, I haven't always been a pastor. I love pastoring, but I uh, also love the marketplace because we can be kings and priests and not just a king or a priest. So uh, I love being both. It, what, what does it mean to be a pastor? Wow, okay, it means uh, a lot because uh, you get to help a lot of people. I'm into uh, helping people. I'm not really concerned about how mega church that how big it gets. Uh, that's that's okay with me if God wants to send. Uh, I'm looking for the Gideon 300, but to be a pastor to help people to more than just uh, help people get out of where they are, but have an outreach to reach a city, to touch a city, uh, the, to teach, and train, to activate the people, let them know that they do have a gift that God has given them. And so that if we can just tap into that gift from a pastoral perspective, if I can just tap into that gift of that uh, saint, uh, that pew sitter or whatever they may call themselves, I call them ministers of God because I believe that we are all called to be a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so, but if we could just tap into that and then join up together, uh, if one can send a thousand, two can send 10,000, so the strength would be there as well. Apostle is uh, the sent one, uh, biblically speaking, uh, theologically speaking. You know, Jesus was the sent one, but also Jesus was all five. And so, uh, talking about the fivefold ministers, uh, so the apostle, prophet, pastor, evangelist, and the teacher. And so, but the apostle was is notarized as the sent one. Uh, it's the apostle also has the governing office of how to govern, uh, how to set things into order. Uh, where a prophet is more guiding, uh, foreseeing, and the teacher, of course, grounds people as they teach them, and the pastor, of course, guards the sheep, as like David did, uh, King David. And then uh, the uh, uh, evangelist is the outreach minister, which is actually uh, takes the gospel outside the four walls of the church. And I, ha I hate to put a label on that because I think everybody has evangelism within them. Fivefold minister being the apostle, a prophet, pastor, evangelist, teacher. Um, you know, Ephesians chapter 4 really explains that very well, I believe. He talks about uh, the five offices uh, in, the, in the gospel. And then he says in verse 12 of Ephesians chapter 4 says, It's for the perfecting of the saints. Uh, so I know uh, sometimes people want to pick up a title without the function, but I believe the title deserves the function. I believe the function deserves the title. And so the fivefold ministry is, it, it, it uh, solidifies the church of its fullness and its wholeness. I know some people don't believe in apostles and prophets. Uh, if Jesus was all five, then we're supposed to be like Jesus. I believe that we can be all five as well. We are have we have all five within us. I think that we are stronger in one or two areas of the five that we have, even though we have all five. I believe that we have all five within us. Wow, well fun is, uh, I love helping people, but uh, to let uh, my hair down, so to speak, and just relax, and I love being with people. Uh, I love uh, to have fun, I love to laugh. Uh, I love to just enjoy life, because I believe that God made every day. 
so that we could have a wonderful life. But I play golf as well, and that's kind of my out, uh, so that I don't, uh, uh, I think everybody deserves a downtime, uh, what we call just, just getting out from and under the pressure and the authorities and things, and just be you. And uh, I'm still a pastor on the golf course, but at the same time, it's just a relaxing time that, that I'm not thinking about things that I have to think about. And, uh, but uh, that's, that's my side of my kind of uh, fun things to let go of and do and uh, be with friends. And it doesn't have to be golf. It could be just a dinner or out to eat, but I love just being with people. To be relational is to reach out and touch someone. Uh, it's kind of a slogan from a telephone company, but I believe that that's what ministers have to do, uh, to be relational, uh, especially pastors. Pastors have got to get out of their comfort zone sometimes and uh, go and meet people, greet people, uh, shake their hand, love on them, give them a quick hug or whatever, and just empower them. Uh, sometimes people talk too much instead of letting the person talk back to you and seeing what they have to say. And so when we begin to make uh, friends and be relational with people, uh, we get to know more about them uh, because they begin to tell us. Uh, we're trying to figure out that one thing that that person really likes to do, and then that's where their heart is, it's where their treasure is. And so if we can just be relational, uh, go out and have a Coke, go out and have lunch together, or just uh, walk up around the pond uh, together at the park, or whatever it may be. Being relational, it draws it friends, you know, so the scripture is very clear in the book of Proverbs that said, if you want friends, show yourself to be friendly.